Hi, it's Jackie with Panama Relocation Tours. Thank you so much for joining us. So today is our Retire in Panama Q&A live stream, which means you get to ask questions and I'll answer them. Uh, but for the benefit of those that are brand new to our channel, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background about Panama Relocation Tours. Uh, my name's Jackie Lang. I'm the owner of Panama Relocation Tours. In 2010, we started doing all-inclusive uh, relocation tours, six-day tours across the country. Uh, right now, we're doing tour number 196. So we've helped a lot of people move to Panama, thousands of people that we've helped move to Panama. And we'd love to help you move to Panama too. I know it's a big decision to move to another country. So that's why we host these monthly uh, Q&A calls to answer your questions. We also provide a lot of YouTube videos with expat interviews, and we have a lot of articles on our website at PanamaRelocationTours.com. So I know the more information that you get, the more confident you're going to be with your move to Panama. So the way this works for Q&A is um, you're not going to be able to answer, ask your question live. You're going to have to type it into that little chat window on the side. And if you would please put three question marks in front of it, then I'll easily be able to identify it as a question. I moved into, this is in my dining room, and I moved into the dining room because the place where I was going to do the live stream, it's, you know, I can hear the boom, boom, boom. And from my neighbors that are having a really big party, it's a wedding reception uh, that they're having over at their house. Actually, just right next to my house, a horse-drawn carriage, with the bride and the groom went by about an hour ago. So they're in full swing in their celebrations. So if you have any questions, just put three question marks in front of it over in the, uh, in the chat window and I can quickly identify it as a, a question. So one of the questions that comes up while you guys are thinking about your questions, I'll talk about uh, some of the different things that um, come up with questions a lot. A lot of people are really concerned about maybe some of the top concerns that people have is if they can get their medications here in Panama. And that's a really big concern because medications sometimes cost more in Panama and they may not be available in Panama. So we really encourage you, even before you get your heart set on moving to Panama, it would be a good idea for you to make sure that your um, medications are available. And in our complete Panama relocation guide, we have a link to a special website where you can go and you can type in any name of any medication and see if it's available and what it would cost. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can also set up a telemedicine conference with a company called expathealthservices.com. Um, meet with a Panamanian doctor that speaks English, go over your health concerns and your medications, and they can let you know if they're available and approximately what they cost. Sometimes the medications are quite a bit more than what you're used to paying, especially if you've got like Medicare and you don't pay hardly anything. So sometimes people just keep their Medicare and they order their medications. You hear that boom, boom <laughs> next to me? Uh, so they order their med medications from a place like Amazon Pharmacy and they have it shipped here to Panama. I'm sorry about the noise, but there's nothing I can do about it. I don't know if you can hear it or not. So some of the questions that have come in is, I'll put it right up here. We have two dogs and a cat. Is it realistic to make this transition to Panama? Yes, it's definitely realistic to make the transition to Panama. Part of it depends on how big your dogs are. Um, I did um, put out some information just the, a, a few weeks ago. If you, if you search uh, Move to Panama with Pets in our website, then it has information about the maximum size of the crate that will go on a commercial airline. If that won't work, then you can always use a pet relocation company. They're kind of expensive. They're about $3,000 a pet. But if you have um, um, two medium-sized dogs and a cat, your cat can probably go in cabin and the two dogs can go in cargo. So that's no problem at all. You guys aren't hearing the noise? Well, man, the party's going strong right next to me. Um, so 
Oh, also, if uh, rem remember, if you just came in, that you need to type three question marks in front of your question for me to quickly and easily be able to identify it as a question. So here's another question. Is there an issue if we arrive with several suitcases if we will start our pensionado visa sometime after we get there? Um, so there's no, you know, you need to start your pensionado visa before your documents expire. Uh, once you get your documents, they're good for six months. So you have to make sure that you get the doc, um, your visa before those expire, ideally a month or two before they expire. But if you come in with several suitcases, there's no problem at all. Just today, or no, yesterday, yesterday, somebody came in with five suitcases that's going on, actually six suitcases that's going on a Panama relocation tour. He's on the tour right now, and he's moving to Las Tablas afterwards. So he brought six suitcases, one to use during the tour, and we had the other one shipped to Las Tablas. So they'll be waiting for him after his tour. Um, now, one of the things that we tell people, if you're just going to be in Panama City um, with a lot of suitcases, and that's not a big deal, customs won't care if you come in with a lot of suitcases, but getting your suitcases from one place in Panama to another place in Panama, the airlines, the domestic airlines charge quite a bit extra for you to have extra luggage. So you might want to use a service like Felitti Chevalli and... Um, they are an in-country courier service. It's about $10 a suitcase to have your suitcases just shipped to the place that you're going to. So that might be a solution for you. So another question. Can I start the pension auto before I get there? Not really. You can't start the pension auto before you get here other than gathering up the documents that are necessary to get the pension auto visa. But the whole immigration process and visa process has to be done here in Panama with an immigration attorney. Um, another question. On Thursday and Sunday, Arrocha gives a 25% discount, but it's still very expensive considering our insurance cost in the USA. Any advice for us? Yes, um, my advice for you is don't go to Arrocha. It's, it's one of the largest pharmacies in Panama, but it's also one of the most expensive pharmacies in Panama. You're going to get much better prices, like maybe 50% less, if you go to a hospital pharmacy, um, depending on where you live. So go to a hospital pharmacy, and you'll get much better prices. And they also honor the Jubilado discounts. Um, every day. It doesn't have to be on a certain day, but they honor the discounts every day. So another question. Is there a time limit to move our household goods taking advantage of the 10K exclusion related to the date we received our pension auto visa? You know, that's a really good question. And I've heard um, mixed answers about it. I need to clarify it with my attorney. Uh, the last I heard is it has to be done within two years of you getting your permanent visa, um, which is fine to do that. I really think it's a good idea to just put your stuff in storage for at least six months after you move to Panama or maybe even a year and make sure that you really like Panama before you move all of your household goods here because it's going to cost a lot of money, like a 40-foot container is about fifteen to $18,000 to get it here to Panama. And if you decide you want to move back, it could cost twice that much to move it back. So make sure you love Panama before you move your household goods. Also, make sure and read our article on PanamaRelocationTours.com. Um, in the upper right-hand uh, corner, type in our search feature, Household, and see the article about shipping household goods and all the things that you need to take into consideration um, whenever you're selecting a place for it to go to. And another question from Larry, we got our temporary visa in July. Congratulations. When should we expect our permanent visa to be available? Well, it's definitely going to be available. Um, let's see if you got it in July, August, September, October, November, December. So you should get it this month. You should get it in January. Um, best thing to do is talk to your immigration attorney. There's a website that she can go to to check on the status of your visa. So ask her to do that and give you that information. 
How much is the average cost for an immigration attorney? That's a great question. And the answer is it depends. If you're using, if you're using one of the immigration attorneys that we recommend, then the average cost for a pensionado visa is going to be about $1,100 for one, her uh, one person, $1,500 for a couple to apply together. If you're using some of the other immigration attorneys that are not on our recommended list, uh, they charge as much as $3,000 to $5,000 for one person. So you can see how buying the complete Panama relocation guide where you get our list of recommended um, immigration attorneys, it saves you money right there just in your cost of your immigration attorney. Um, and Michelle says, can you ever switch from retirement visa to visa to allow you to work? You really can. And let me, I did it. So I know all about it. Originally I got, when I moved to Panama, I had no plans to start a tour business. So originally I applied for the pensionado visa. And then I started getting inquiries about from friends of mine to show them around Panama. Then other people called, said they wanted me to show them around Panama. So um, the tour business kind of got started and I didn't had no idea it was going to turn into once a week tours, but um, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do tours and I couldn't, and I was actually doing the tours. I couldn't do that with a pensionado visa. So what you have to do is you have to renounce your pensionado visa and that costs about $500 to do that. And then you have to reapply all over again with all new documents, new FBI report or RCMP report, you know, new everything uh, to be able to get the work permit. So um, it's best if you think you might want to work in the future, just go ahead and get the kind of visa that will allow you to do that. Um, so you don't have to go through, jump through the hoops two times on getting a visa because that's what I had to do. Uh, when will you repeat the domain names um, online? So I'm, I'm sure you're talking about the special live stream that we had that was for the PRT or Panama Relocation Tour members on Thursday. Uh, the replay of that is available in our private Facebook group. Um, and hopefully tonight I'll have it in our complete Panama Relocation Guide for you to watch also. It was a fantastic um, a lot of really good information. My guest speaker, um, it's his business. He's a professional. Um, he's, he makes a ton of money um, flipping domain names. For me, it's just a hobby. Uh, but still, I make enough money from my hobby that it complete, could completely support my lifestyle here in Panama. So it's something that I think everybody should investigate. So... Next question is Mark. It seems most places for sale at rent are furnished. What is the availability of unfurnished? Uh, so that's one of the things we talk about in that uh, bring your household goods to Panama article is that the majority of places are furnished and it's kind of hard to find a place that's not furnished. So you're, if you're bringing household goods with you, your choices of places to move to is much less because um, there's very few places that are unfurnished. There's going to be some, but there's not as many. Good question from Greg. Can you work online with a pensionado visa? Yes, you can work online. So long as you're not selling any products or services to people in Panama, then you can have an online business with no problem. And... This one didn't show up. Are builders, contractors reliable? Does the relocation guide outline possible contractors? I don't. In the online guide, I don't make any recommendations for contractors. Um, and I wouldn't want to do that because, you know, one person could have a fantastic experience and then two other people can have a horrible experience. So I wouldn't want to recommend anyone to you unless I knew for sure that it's going to always, always have a really good experience. The best way to find a reliable builder is just to talk to people that live in the area that have actually had a house built. Um, also talk to the contractors and ask for references and then call those references and talk to them. Go see some of the houses that they built. Um, whatever they say that they, oh, they built, you know, 100 houses, well, don't believe it. Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. 
uh, but talk is cheap and it's better to uh, trust but verify anything that they say. Monique says, is soy milk readily available in supermarkets or, do, or specialty shops? Soy, soy milk is readily available in um, grocery stores, even the mini supers. Um, I was in one today and it has soy milk in there. Mini super is a teeny tiny little grocery store that just has the essentials, but they had soy milk. And... Question, uh, we are in Boquete at the moment and we love it. How much would a few hectares of land be within 10 minutes of Boquete or is that sold already? Any good real estate agents that are trustworthy? So in our complete Panama relocation guide, we have a list of honest and ethical real estate agents that are in the Boquete area. Um, there's not very many, there's two that we recommend. So the list is very short. The, and it depends on where uh, the land was. If it was further south, down closer to Caldera or Puerto Rios, then the land is going to be probably 50% less than if it were quite a bit closer to land. But for a few hectares, you're probably looking at, um, I would say, $150,000 to $200,000. So it's going to be quite expensive. By the way, a hectare... For people that don't know, is two and a quarter acres. Another question from Greg, is rental insurance required in Panama? Nope, it's not required in Panama. You can get it, and I think it's like $50 a year. It's not hardly worth it to get it, but it's available. I've heard that the Pacific Coast is dirty, and I'm wondering what are some good places on the Caribbean? So the Pacific Coast is not dirty. I don't know where you got your information, but the majority of the Pacific Coast is, uh, coast is quite clean. Uh, there's probably some towns where it's not so clean, but it's quite clean on both the Caribbean and on the Pacific side. On the Caribbean, I would only recommend the Bocas del Toro area. You guys not, aren't hearing that music? That's going on with the party next door. Man, they're having a good time. I'm hearing hoopla and hollering and the boom, boom, boom of the music. Um, if I plan to move there June 1st, how far in advance should I start to get documents and the apostille? Well, you don't have to get the apostille, Rita. You can get what's called an authentication at the Panama Consulate. And I would say that you should start maybe about three months. Uh, two or three months uh, before you plan to move here, just so you're not um, nervous because um, you haven't gotten things as quick as you should. So if you start two or three months and then you move here in June, that still leaves, you know, at least three months left before your documents expire. So uh, from Raymond, coming from Canada, and we can't fit heavy items such as a Vitamix and some heavy tools, what's the best way to proceed? There's an easy solution to that, Raymond. I'm glad you asked the question. If you go to our website and you click in, um, uh, let's see, getting Amazon orders. If you type in getting Amazon orders, it has an article about mail forwarding companies that are here in Panama. And they're all over the country. We have a list of the ones that we recommend in our complete Panama relocation guide. And what they'll do is they'll assign you an address in Miami and you ship those items in boxes or in crates. Um, you can even do a full pallet if you wanted to, like four foot by four foot by four foot pallet and ship those heavier items um, to Miami with the mail forwarding company and then um, it will be brought to the town where you're going to live, and you can pick it up there. Some of them will even deliver it right to your house. How many hours will it take from Bocas do Toro to Show Pony in Las Lajas? So you're looking at five, five to five and a half hours from Bocas do Toro. Well, now if you're including the water taxi, then uh, maybe more like six. So the water taxi from the island is like Cologne or any of the main islands to the mainland. It's going to be about 40 minutes. Then the drive to get from Bocas 
um, over to the Pan American Highway is going to be about three and a half to four hours. And then from the Pan American Highway, another hour and 30 minutes to get to Las Lajas. So I would allow six hours. Um, do you receive the relocation guide with the tour? Yes, you do. After the Panama relocation tour, uh, there's no additional fee. We give you access to the complete Panama relocation guide. You also get access to our private uh, Facebook group where we offer ongoing support, and it's where you can connect with your tour mates and other people that have already moved to Panama. So it's a great resource. The other great thing about the relocation guide is I keep it updated. There's new laws and new changes about different things. And um, so I update it every single month. And when I do update it, I send you an email that says, we just updated the online guide and here's a link to the new information. For example, they just passed a new law in uh, Panama West, which includes the Chame, uh, Gorgona, Coronado area, even San Carlos. It was passed on December the 30th. And now you can only go on the beaches between 6 a.m. and 5 p.m. if you're in that area. Also, no alcoholic beverages are allowed in that area. So I put a link to that new law in the online guide. And another question. Can you install a home generator since the lights go off often? You know what? The lights don't go off that often. I've been here, um, what, 13 years now? And yes, the lights go out, but I don't have a generator. If the lights go out, then I just take a break uh, from whatever it was that I was doing. So I don't have any kind of a generator. I am still able to use my cell phone. Um, even if the lights go out, so I can check emails, um, I can do banking things, I can do a lot of stuff just on my cell phone, even if the electricity is out. So just have a good cell phone plan with Tigo, and you won't need that. If it does go out, it might be for five minutes, maybe an hour at the most. So it's not an urgent situation. Um, do you get access to the private Facebook group with the purchase of the relocation guide? Yes. When you purchase the complete Panama relocation guide, and if you go to our website and you click on online guide, then that tells you all about it. It has the, all the same information that you would get on the tour, even more actually. Um, plus it has information about our private tour guides, how to do a self-guided tour, recommendations for immigration attorneys, insurance agents, real estate agents, everything you're going to need to move to Panama is inside the complete Panama relocation guide. And you get access to our private Facebook group where I offer ongoing support. And I'm in there every single day answering questions and, and helping people um, with solve problems. Um, just yesterday, uh, someone came, they just came in and they were feeling really terrible and they needed to see a doctor. So I told them who to call to have a doctor that would go right to their house so they didn't even have to leave. Um, do you have any recommendations for online companies used to ship a pallet or large boxes to Florida? Um, yes, any of the mail forwarding companies that we recommend, um, and it's not an online company, these are physical offices that the people have in Panama. They're called mail forwarding companies. They'll assign you an address in Florida, and that's where you ship your boxes or your pallet to. So the it really depends on where you're going to move to. If you're going to move to Coronado, you'd use a mail forwarding company in Coronado. If you're going to move to Las Tablas, you'd use one there. If you're going to move to Boquete or Panama City, you'd use one there. So you need to decide where you're going to move to first and then pick your mail forwarding company. This one didn't work. I use a CPAP to sleep. If I lose electricity, I could die. What do you suggest? Well, with a CPAP, if you need that, uh, then you probably, there's some little portable generators that would probably adequate uh, be adequate for your CPAP machine. Uh, you don't need a whole house generator, just a little portable one that can handle your CPAP machine. I don't know that much about generators, but um, if you get on our private Facebook group, I'm sure some other people would have some recommendations. So Pat, how is the process 
uh, for U.S. address. I'm not real sure uh, what you mean by that question. Um, if you could retype it and clarify that a little bit, then I'll be glad to answer it for you. So Don wants to know about the path to Panama citizenship. After you have your permanent visa for five years, then you can apply for Panama citizenship. And the process for that is um, there's a study exam that's on the Electoral Tribunal website. We also have the study exam inside the Complete Panama Relocation Guide, all the questions, all the answers uh, for a written test that you have to take. You also have to have an interview in Spanish where they're going to basically ask you, why do you want to become a Panamanian? So if you get at least a 70 on the test and you pass the interview, then you can become a Panama citizen. Um, Rusty, if I work remotely, is there a way to bypass the frequent internet outages? So the outage, it depends on where you live. Um, if you live in some areas, you're not going to have frequent internet outages. The other thing is you can get what's called an UPS machine. Um, and it's a little box that's like, I don't know, 10 inches by 10 inches. But the UPS machine will keep your internet working um, even when you don't. Um, we have several people um, that are in part of our private Facebook group that they have online businesses and they do Zoom meetings, like 70 Zoom meetings a month. Um, and they do that just fine with no problems. They don't have a generator and uh, they're able to do it. So the internet does not go out as often as you might think. Uh, since I have purchased the guide, can I still get in the Facebook group? I do not have a Facebook account yet. So yeah, you'd have to set up a Facebook account and then you can get in our private uh, Facebook group. Uh, we sent you whenever you bought the guide, we sent you a link to it. But if you need one again, uh, just shoot me uh, an email at info at PanamaRelocationTours.com and I'll be glad to send you a link to it. Uh, from U.S. address to Miami address, how does the process in between time? So let's say you order a package from Amazon. If you order something from Amazon, you're going to have that sent to your Miami address. When it comes in, then it's flown to Panama, and there it's put on a truck, and it's taken to the town where you live. Whenever your package arrives, then the mail forwarding company is going to send you an email and say you have a package. So you just go in and pick it up. The time from placing that order on Amazon until you have the package at your house is about seven days. Um, so it's really pretty fast considering all the logistics that have to take place. Um, and another question, remember to please put three question marks in front of your questions so I can easily identify it as a question. I think there's some other questions over there, um, but I don't know if it's just a conversation that people are having with each other or if it's a question for me. Uh, does the relocation guide include realtors in the Panama City and Coronado area? Yes, we absolutely do. William wants to know if health, insur health insurance possibilities for those over 70 years old. So we, there's two options. Uh, one option would be we have some, here comes Buster. Um, so, <laughs> so one of the options is a Panama insurance that will insure people up to age 70. Um, they do have a requirement that you're fully vaccinated for COVID for Panama insurance. And also if you have pre-existing conditions, they probably would not insure you. But we have another option that's available and actually it's an international plan that's quite affordable that will insure up to age 80 um, and even if you have pre-existing conditions. So we have information about both of those in our complete Panama relocation guide. Uh, whenever you log into it, just click health insurance options and you'll see information about both of those and the insurance agent, I'm so, sorry, the insurance broker that you can contact to um, to get it. Are you guys hearing that? They're letting off fireworks next door now. So I got the boom, boom from the party and fireworks going on next door. They did invite me to come over for the party and I might go check it out after the live stream.
They love to party here in Panama. If you guys, you just need to know that, that uh, your neighbors might want to party, don't worry, you'll always get an invitation to go also. Is there an affordable, affordable community where I can swim and bike frequently? Um, so if you don't mind swimming in the ocean, uh, then you can certainly um, swim in the ocean. Bicycling, um, it depends on where you live. I would say the most affordable community where you can swim and bike frequently would be in the Azura Peninsula. I would especially check out an area called El Rampillo, which is just a little bit south of Chitre. Even in Chitre, you're only 10 minutes to get to the beach where you can swim. So Chitre and El Rampillo are both great places. Also, there's a town called La Villa, um, L-A-V-I-L-L-A, -L -L -A, and that would be another place um, that would be good for you. But the Zwara would be super affordable. Also, uh, Bocas del Toro is another place to check out. If you're on the main island of Isla Colon, a bicycle is the main mode of transportation over there. And of course, they have beaches all the way around the island, so plenty of places to swim. So definitely check out Bocas also. You can get a one bedroom for about five furnished for $500. So that's pretty affordable. Um, the prices are a little bit cheaper in the Azura, but they're both very good. Question from Mario, is it legal to homeschool American children there? It's legal to homeschool children from any country there. Even Panamanians can be homeschooled. Uh, you don't have to let the government know that you're homeschooling. You just can do your own thing. You don't have to report it or anything. A lot of people use some kind of an online uh, homeschooling system. We actually have an article about that on our website. So if you go to Panama Relocation Tours, Dot com and in the upper right hand corner click in homeschool and you can see the article with some recommendations of some curriculum to use. If you have a question for me if you would please type three question marks in front of it so that I can um, easily identify it. So Gayla says she can't hear any noise. That's good. I'm glad I'm, I moved into my dining room away from where I normally would do the live stream. And I think this is a pretty good background, don't you think? You like my background? You let me tell you about this background. When I bought my house, uh, well, when I moved into my house, first I rented it in Boquete and then I bought it. It has this really big wall and it needed some big piece of art up there. But of course, for a big piece of art, it's going to cost a fortune to do it. And I was at the... Uh, one of the Panamanian markets one time and I saw this beautiful sarong. This is a sarong. And I thought that would look really pretty up on my wall. It was great big. It would fit. So I bought the sarong for $20 and I got some, cut some bamboo out of my yard and I used double stick tape to put the sarong on the bamboo and just hung it on the wall. So all of a sudden I had a big piece of art on my wall and it only cost 20 bucks. There's always creative solutions. Um, so Prentice wants to know, is the influx of expats creating a backlash from Panamanians? I sure haven't noticed it. Um, all the Panamanians that I know and that I talk to, they say keep them coming because that creates jobs, jobs, jobs for them. They have more job stability now than they've had in a long, long time because of all of the things that expats want, like restaurants and uh, grocery stores and shopping at a mall and all those things create jobs for Panamanians. Paul wants to know, I live in New Jersey and want to know the easiest and safest way to bring my three beagles to Panama with the least amount of stress for them. So it depends on your budget, Paul. Uh, one is that you could ship them all on a commercial flight in cargo. Um, so that's one solution, and it, it, I don't know how big a beagle is, but that might cost maybe $1,000 per pet. Uh, the other one that you can do is you can use a pet relocation company that would handle everything for you, and they would bring them to Panama. Um, if you can afford it, um, the least stressful for them and the least stressful for you would be a charter flight, which is going to cost about $25,000, but we can always find somebody to share that flight with you, maybe even two families to share the flight with you. So if you just found one, 
you could get your cost down to 12,000 if you could find two people. Um, so it'd be 25,000 divided. So you could get it in maybe $8,000 to get all three of your dogs and you into Panama with your suitcase. So that's some solutions. Are there plenty of veterinarians in the smaller towns? So some of the really small towns might not have a veterinarian um, that speaks English. They may have a veterinarian, but not one that speaks English. But most towns are going to have a veterinarian, um, plenty of veterinarians. And you should know that they make house calls. It's about $25 for them to come to your house. You don't even have to take your pet to the doctor. So Tracy says, I'm an Air Force veteran and wondering if there are any VA veteran administration healthcare facilities there. So no, Tracy, there's no VA hospitals um, here in Panama. However, um, there are plenty of medical benefits available to veterans. We have an article about that and a video from one of the veteran service officers here in Panama. So go to our website in the search feature, type in veteran and you can read all about it. There is a hospital in Panama City, it's called Hospital Breezes. It's not a VA hospital, but it's almost exclusively veterans that go there and they will take care of billing either the VA or TRICARE. If you're retired, they would bill TRICARE, otherwise they would be VA. Um, there's also clinics that are uh, run by the veteran service officers throughout Panama. There's one in Boquete, there's one in Chitre, uh, there's one in the Coronado area. There's one over in Bocas. So there are clinics that veterans can go to to get medical care. And also there are about 14 pharmacies in the whole country that you can send them a list of your medications and they will bring it right to your house and they build the VA for that. So even though there's not a VA hospital, there's all kinds of benefits that are available to veterans and you could learn more about it by going to our website and just typing in veteran in the search feature, more fireworks. Did you hear it? You're not hearing any of that? Anyway, it's like the 4th of July over here um, or New Year's, any of them, any reason for a party. So there, you can get medical care here. Don't worry about it. So Julia says that she's watching from London and you like my backdrop. I'm glad you like my backdrop. Did you hear? It's a sarong that I bought for $20 and just uh, put it on some bamboo out of my yard and uh, hung it up on the wall. What's the average cost for used SUV or four-wheel uh, drive truck? So you probably won't really need four-wheel drive unless you're going to be living in an area where the roads are not paved. Um, so I would say about ten thousand dollars, ten to fifteen thousand dollars is going to be the average cost to get something that's used. So Eugene says, "What fireworks?" Well, um, my neighbors are having a party, and there's live music, lots of loud live music, and also fireworks going off. I thought you guys might could hear it, but maybe not. Maybe I'm the only one that hears it. Um, so once again, if you have any questions, just please put three question marks in front of it. I see all kinds of conversations going on over here in the chat, but I don't know if it's for me or if it's for somebody else. How do evictions and foreclosure laws differ from those in the U.S. Uh, from an investor? Well, as an investor, I was a real estate investor for 25 years before I moved to Panama. So I'm very familiar with foreclosure and eviction laws and you would probably know that it's different for every single state and every single city so it depends so if you have a tenant um, that has not paid then you can go file um, with uh, the mayor's office you file a claim to get them out of the property but you need to know this and it's very very important for landlords if the people that have rented a house from you have children, you're not allowed to evict them until the end of the school year because they don't want to disrupt the children. So for that reason, a lot of people will not rent to people with children. Um, also, foreclosure laws, there's not going to be many foreclosures. Did you know 90% of the homes in Panama are free and clear? There's no mortgage. Panamanians are very much against debt. 
Um, some of them have a mortgage, but the majority of people, they'd rather live in a tiny house with no mortgage than live in a great big house with a mortgage. So there's really not very many foreclosures in Panama at all. Okay, another question over here. Uh, is the influx of ex expats causing real estate to go up? It depends on where you are. If you're in Panama City, um, there's a lot of expats moving to Panama City, but there's so much inventory that the prices have come down, both for buy buying and for rentals in Panama City. Some areas like um, Boquete, um, I haven't seen the actual price of the property go up that much, but I've seen rental prices have gone up. If you're working with a real estate agent, um, also in Avalle, prices are through the roof for rental in Avalle. Um, and in Coronado, there's still a lot of inventory, so you can get great deals. So it just depends on how much inventory they is, that there is, and then you can um, determine if the price is going to be more or less. Um, I can tell you that if you rent a house that's from the owner directly versus listed with a real estate agent, you'll always get a better price. Here's an example. Um, someone on our tour, they were looking at a property in Boquete and it was listed uh, with a property management company, not one of the companies that we recommend, but it was one of the property management companies. They were asking $1,800 for the property and it didn't rent. Um, so the people, they just waited until that agent wasn't advertising it anymore. And they talked to some people and found out who the owners were. And they rented that house from the owner directly for $1,000 a month. Now, it could have been a net listing was going on, which means the owner said, I want 1000 The agent said 1800 hoping they can make some extra money. That does happen in Panama. Uh, but if you rent from the owner directly, you can usually get a much, much better deal. And a question from Dottie. If I buy the guide and my youngest son lives in another state and wants to come with me on the tour, is there some way he could see the guide too? Yes, if it's a family member, um, then we, we do make some exceptions. Usually you have to live in the same household uh, for you to... Um, be able to have two people to have access. But if it's just you and your son and nobody else is going to have access, then we could arrange that. Is there a list in the guide of the order and when to do things to make the move? Yeah, you'll be really loving this. We have actually a six-month checklist um, that you get in the online guide. So it says six months before you're going to move to Panama, do this and this and this. and you know, uh, five and a half months before you move to Panama, do this and this and this, and five months, do that and that. And we have that list just so that nothing falls through the cracks so that you don't forget to do something that was important. For example, uh, putting a change of address in with the post office and change it to your address in Florida. So any mail that came in will be shipped to Florida and you'll still be able to get it. When to get your visa. Uh, when to put your house on the market if you're going to be selling it, when to sell your car, when to make your flight reservations, uh, when to contact your attorney to let them know you want to get a visa. So the six-month checklist um, has step-by-step, um, -step, do this, do that, do this, do that um, for six months to make you have a move that is super easy, super smooth, and very hassle-free. Uh, since you've moved to Panama, have you had any issues with seasonal allergies? You know, normally I don't have seasonal allergies at all. I think it was about two years ago. I don't know. There was something in the air. Um, and I did get some allergies for a little while, but it only lasted for about two weeks. Um, so sometimes people get that around the time when the coffee plants, if you live in an area where there's coffee plants, when they're flowering, then some people have some allergies. Uh, but that only lasts for about a month, and then it goes away. So Doug says, are there college universities near in Boquete area for English-speaking students continue their education? Nope, there's no uh, colleges or universities near Boquete for English-speaking students. Uh, of course, there's online 
college that's available for English speaking students, so they would have to go that route instead. So Michelle, with the residency visa, with the retirement visa, what happens with the residency, residency status if my minor children, eight and 10, when they turn 18? So when they turn 18, they can actually apply for Panama citizenship. Then they can work in Panama and do everything else. And that's probably the easiest thing to happen is just go ahead and get their Panama citizenship. Let me see. They're cranking it up a little bit next door. You, can you hear it yet? No, you can't hear it? Well, I wish you were here. You could enjoy the party. It's a little bit warm today. That's why I have my hair up today because it's just a little bit warm. I've got all my windows open and my ceiling fan on. Even though it's six, almost seven o'clock here, um, it's a little bit warm and it feels great. Um, I looked at mail forwarding company in South Dakota because of income taxes and driver's license. Would this, this be the same as Florida? So, Frank, no, it's not. Um, in South Dakota, we did a live stream about that. So if you go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Panama Relocation Tours, we did a live stream with a lady in South Dakota. And the reason you would want to get residency in South Dakota is if you live in a state where you have high income tax or where they tax your pension, um, then you would not want to, you would want to change your residency in the United States before you move to Panama. We recommend South Dakota because you can do it in one day. It doesn't cost very much at all. And uh, once you establish your residency there, then you're not going to have to pay taxes in the state where they tax your pension. Um, and everything else. So um, that's what South Dakota is for. Now they do offer a mail forwarding and that's, you know, for if you wanted to have your income tax stuff, credit card statements, things like that sent to them, then you could, but it's really not necessary to do that as much as possible. You want to get your mail converted over to electronic delivery. So you're not getting very much mail. So you want to set up a mail forwarding company in Panama that will give you an address in Florida. And that's what you're going to use for when your kids want to send you a birthday present, when you order something from Amazon, when you buy something from eBay, um, all those things, it would be sent to the place in Miami, and then it would be forwarded on to Panama. Um, is, it le is it legal to import an e-bike into Panama? Yes, I know a lot of people that have brought an e-bike into Panama. And uh, so you can certainly do that. They also sell e-bikes in Panama. So when you come to visit Panama, before you plan on shipping your own, you might check some of the bike stores and see what's available here and save yourself some money and just buy one in Panama instead of uh, shipping yours. But I know some people love the bike they have and they want to ship it. So you can certainly do that too. You do have to you know, disconnect the battery and do some special things with shipping. But we do have some shipping company recommendations inside our complete Panama relocation guide that can give you step-by-step -step on how to get that e-bike to Panama. So Lisa says, thank you, Jackie Lang, for taking the time to do these live streams and providing us with the most reliable information about Panama. Lisa, you're welcome. I know it's a big decision to move to another country. Um, for me, it was a little bit easier because I, my dad was in the military. So we lived in Germany for three years. I lived in Puerto Rico for a couple of years. I lived in Mexico before. Um, so it was easier for me to make a decision. But for people that have never lived outside of their home country before, I know it's a big decision. And that's why I do these live streams to answer your questions. I provide a lot of videos with people that have moved here so you can see how happy they are and a lot of articles just to give you as much information as possible to make you feel confident that you can make the move too. And you're going to absolutely love it when you get here. Do you have um, any drive-in movie theaters? No. Nope. Um, there's one drive-in movie theater um, that's, I think, around the Coronado area, uh, but I don't know of any, any drive-in movie theaters anywhere else. Uh, every once in a while, some of the restaurants will show a movie in the restaurant or some of the bars 
we'll show a movie at their there, but it's not a drive-in. You just sit in, you can order dinner and some drinks while you're watching movies. Uh, can a 48-year-old disabled person living on Social Security meeting the $1,000 per month income qualify for a retirement visa? Yes, Anna, um, you can. It doesn't. It's, the age doesn't matter. You have to be at least 18 to apply for the a retirement visa. But so long as you have the $1,000 a month in lifetime income, it's important it has to be lifetime income, uh, then you can get the retirement visa, also called the pensionado visa. Um, during the rainy season, do you still, um, I don't know, I, you're going to have to retype it, Don. You left off some words on that question. So type it again and I'll answer it for you. Can you work in Panama and still come in on the pensionado visa? No, you cannot work in Panama um, if you have a pensionado visa unless it's an online job. If you have some kind of an online job where you're not selling any products or services in Panama, then you can still have a pensionado visa and work. Um, and you can check a website called Upworks or Upwork. Um, about getting an online job. Also, have I have a free report called Fund Your Freedom Overseas. It's on our website, Fund Your Freedom Overseas, and it has all kinds of suggestions for online jobs that you can do. We just did a special live stream about domain flipping, um, where you buy a domain name and you put it up on an auction website and you sell it and make some money. So that's one of the online businesses that we recommend. So Angela says, do you feel that living in Panama is safer than living in Mexico? You know, I would, it would depend on where you're living in Mexico and where you're living in Panama. But in general, I would say that Panama is much safer than Mexico. You know, I live in Mexico part time um, in the Lake Chapala area and it's quite safe there. But you still, um, you know, you still hear about pickpockets and houses getting broken into and little things that happen um, more so there than you do in Panama. You know, there's other places like Meridia in Panama where um, supposedly I've never been there, but supposedly it's one of the safest places in the world. If uh, definitely in Mexico, if not the whole world. So it just depends on where you live in Mexico. It depends on where you live in Panama. There's some places in Panama where crime is a problem. Um, if you go to some of the border towns, um, like around the Darien, uh, then that's a problem. If you go to Cologne, then there's definitely more crime there. Um, some of the other border towns like Pasa Canoas or Porto um, are known for having more crime. So it depends on where you live in Panama uh, compared to where you live in Mexico. Uh, during the rainy season, now we got the whole question. During the rainy season, does satellite TV go out? So, no, it uh, doesn't go out. You know, the rainy season, I would actually say that the, the electricity goes out less during the rainy season than it does during the dry season. For some reason, the winds uh, sometimes cause branches to fall and break one of the electric lines because most of it's above ground. It's not underground. Um, and that's why... Um, just um, every once in a while, the electric company, they'll put out a notice that you're not going to have any electricity uh, tomorrow between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. And it's because they're going to shut it down and on the, along the whole street, they're going to trim the trees so that the chances of the limbs falling and breaking one of the electric lines is less. Uh, but you do have to put up with inconvenience that while they're trimming it, they turn off the electricity. So the rainy season, it doesn't affect it. And uh, most people, I don't think, most people don't use satellite TV. A lot of people have an Amazon Fire Stick, and that's how they get a lot of expats have Fire Sticks, and that's how they get their TV. So it doesn't go out very often. So um, is there a temper temperature difference during the rainy season versus the summer season? Not really. Uh, the, the weather's pretty much the same. Sometimes in the rainy season, because of the moisture in the air, 
Um, it creates more humidity, of course, so that makes it feel a little bit colder, but the actual temperature is the same. Um, is Starlink in Panama? That's a great question. So um, I've heard from people in Bocas del Toro that they're using Starlink already in Bocas del Toro, but what they ordered was like a Starlink that's for an RV. It's not really for a house because it might be on a boat or on the island or whatever that they're using it for. So Starlink is definitely available in Bocas. I don't know about other areas unless you order the RV unit, which is working just fine over in Bocas. And people say it works great. Uh, does Boquete suffer from mold issues uh, that we've heard in, of in Panama City? So any place in Panama can suffer from mold issues depending on the house that you live in. For example, my house, I have all my windows open right now and I have ceiling fans going in every single room. So I have a lot of good air circulation. So I don't worry about mold. I don't have a mold problem. But if I lived in a house where the, you know, I didn't have good air circulation in the house and I couldn't keep it moving with ceiling fans, uh, then you might have an issue with mold. So it really depends on the house more than it depends on the location. And Rusty says, is there a part of Panama you can live where you would see the most wildlife? Yes, in Bocas del Toro. If you live there, that's where you're going to see the most wildlife. You're going to see sloth. You're going to see all kinds of beautiful birds. You're going to see iguanas and lizards, all kinds of things. Whoop, sorry about that. Um, in, in one of your videos of Panama City, the couple said they haven't met anyone yet because it's the city. You mentioned a website that others can tell them. Um, so, yeah, so they've only been in Panama City about a month, and they've just been busy getting situated there, and they haven't um, really gone out and tried to find, meet new people. But there's a great website. Let me see if I can type it in here. Just a second. Let me put it up. One minute. Okay, here it is. It's internations.org. Um, so this is, um, it's free to join that. And it's an organization that is a way for expats to meet each other in Panama City. They have weekly events that you can go to. You know, it's a great for networking and meeting people. Um, I've been to a couple of their events when I was in Panama City. They had a wine tasting at a, a place. And I think there was about 50 people that went to it. Um, I also went to one that was an art show, um, just all kinds of different things. So every they're always having different kind of events that you can go to. Whoops. Is there a website or process to find home renters or sales by owner rather than a realtor? Yes, if you go to Craigslist, Panama, uh, that's where a lot of the owners advertise directly on Craigslist, Panama. That's one way. The other one is you have to be in Panama and just talk to people and let them know what you're looking for and say, hey, do you know anybody that has this? And um, then you can get information directly about owners. But you have to be boots on the ground to get that kind of information. And whenever it's a really good deal, it's going to go fast. So you have to be able to make a split second decision. Don't bother contacting owners. If you're just a tire kicker, if you're just in town, you want to see a lot of rentals, but you're not planning to rent anything yet. Um, they're ready to rent that property. So you have to be ready to go. So wait to contact owners until you're actually ready to rent something like that couple that I was telling you about, they were renting a house um, but they wanted in Boquete, but they wanted to move and they saw this how it advertised and they absolutely loved the property, but it was 1800 and they were already spending 1200 and they were hoping to reduce their cost of living, not increase their cost of living. So they just waited till it wasn't with the agent anymore. 
um, and they ask around town. They found out who owned the property. They talked to the owner directly. By the way, it was a Panamanian lady, and they rented it from her for a thousand dollars a month. She was asking a thousand. They paid a thousand. They didn't even negotiate because it was so much less than what the real estate agent had it advertised for. Um, how? How do your recommended real estate agents get compensated? So they get compensated. It depends on if you're renting or if you're buying. If, for example, for a rental, usually the way it works is um, if they rent a house uh, for someone, for an owner, then the owner has to either pay them 50% of the first month's rent or sometimes the agent wants 100% of the first month's rent. So that's how they get compensated for finding a tenant for the property. If they're also managing the property, uh, then they're may probably making five, maybe 10% of the monthly rent also. But that's how they get compensated. The owner pays them. Do you need to worry about crocodiles while swimming in the ocean? Not in the ocean, but some of the ponds and lakes and rivers um, you may need to worry about crocodiles or they have something here called a caiman, which is a little bit smaller, and um, but not in the ocean. Uh, what do you need to have to do to be ready to rent when ready? All you need is money. Uh, so to be ready to rent, um, they're going to want to see your passport uh, photo so they can fill out the lease agreement and put your information in there. And then you need to have the money ready to pay the security deposit and the first month's rent. Most people, that's all they want is security deposit and first month's rent. A few people want the last month's rent also, but it's pretty rare that anybody would want that. Uh, rental owner law in Panamanian law. So, so yes, there's definitely rental laws in Panama, and you know it's uh, there's a ton of information about that. Um, but basically, um, if you rent a property from the owner um, and you decide that the property isn't right for you for some reason, you can give a 30-day notice and you can get out of your lease. You won't get your security deposit back, but at least you can get out of your lease and you're no longer liable for making those lease payments. Um, it's all about what it says in the lease. Also, the owner does not have that same capability. They can't give you a 30-day notice and um, tell you, we don't want you as a tenant anymore. You can get out of the lease, but they can't get out of the lease. So that's the most important things that you need to know. There's all kinds of other uh, things about rental laws in Panama, but those are the most important. Um, how are the gas prices now in Panama? So I just filled up uh, yesterday and I got Octane 95, uh, which is the lowest is Octane 91. The highest is Octane 95. So I guess you would call that premium. And it was $1.05 uh, per liter. So you would multiply that times, I think, 3.75 to determine what that is per gallon. But I paid $1.05 per liter for Octane 95. Is there public transportation to travel between cities? Yes, public transportation is excellent between all the cities. Now, I should let you know, Jacqueline, that sometimes um, you can't go from point A to point B on just one bus. Sometimes you have to go from point A to point B, change buses to go to point C where you really wanted to go. For example, if you wanted to go from Panama City to Las Tablas, first you're going to have to go from Panama City to Santiago. And then from Santiago, you can go change buses and you can go down to Las Tablas. But there's always a way. And the buses have a big sign at the top that says where they're going. So that helps you make sure you're getting on the right bus. So it's a little bit after seven. So I've already been doing this for an hour, but I see we still have a few more questions. So I'm going to take a couple more questions. Um, as long as you can hear me, I'm surprised you can't hear all that noise going on next door with the party and the fireworks. Uh, what's the best health insurance for Panama? So the best health insurance for Panama is the one that you qualify for. And uh, so it depends. 
um, if you qualify for it or not. There's a lot of different ones. If you look on my website, PanamaRelocationTours.com, um, and if you type in the search feature, health insurance options, I have information about several different health insurance options and a link to a brochure um, in English that gives you information about all of those health insurance options. So that'll give you a general idea. A lot of people go with one called the family medical plan. And if you're uh, between 60 and 69 years old, it's $102 a month. If you're uh, between 70 and 74, 74 is their cutoff for a new policy, it's only $125 a month. So it's super affordable. Of course, if you're younger than that, then it's going to be cheaper. But the brochure tells you what it covers. I also have information about international health insurance and some other health insurance options too. So check out that article. Will I have any major issues bringing my sports car into Panama? So, um, yeah, bringing your sports car into Panama, you can certainly bring it into Panama. Um, Panama cars do not have um, catalytic converters and things like that. Um, so the gas that we have in Panama is more geared to, car, to cars that don't have emission controls on it. So you may have a little bit of a problem with a Panama gas in your car. Uh, some people do, some people don't. It just depends on the car. Um, also, the gas in Panama does not include any ethanol. Um, it's just gas. So um, your car might um, reject some of the gas at first. You just have to find which station, whether it's Delta, Chirpel, Texaco, which gas station is going to have a gas that's agreeable with your car. You might want to read our article about shipping your car to Panama. Um, so just go to our website, type in shipping a car or just the word car, and you can see the article about shipping your car. So can you rent month by month? Uh, nope. Most landlords won't do. They want a six-month minimum lease. If you want to rent month to month, then your best source for that would be to go to airbnb.com, and that's where you can rent month to month. But most landlords that have a house they want to rent, they want it to be for at least six months. So I hope all of you have enjoyed our live stream and our Q&A. I hope that you've learned a few things, um, probably some things you didn't know. So I hope that you've learned a lot of things. If you think of some questions later on that you um, wish you would have asked, but you didn't have time to, don't worry. We do one of these Q and A's every single month. So you can save it for the next time, or you can always send an email to info at Panama relocation tours.com. Give our, give us a call at our office. The number is 972. It's a U.S. number 972-496-4500. We're always glad to talk to you to answer your questions. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks. And have the enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye, everybody.